Hello everyone, Dan here for Waygate Technologies and I have another installment for you for the USM100, our new portable flaw detector. Um, today I'd like to show you a little bit of a special application. Uh, we've had some questions about uh, how good is the pulser in the USM100. Um, and a good way to show that off is a low frequency application with a very large diameter probe. In this case, I have a rubber step block here with steps of 1 inch, 2 inch, 3, 4 inches. And I have a very low frequency probe, a 500 kilohertz probe, uh, 1 inch diameter that's well suited to penetrating through this very attenuative rubber material. And one of our classic instruments, the USN60, was our previous benchmark for this test. Um, it had a 450 volt pulser, uh, square wave pulser adjustable out to 1,000 nanoseconds, uh, one microsecond of pulse width, uh, and it was well suited to this, this application. On the screen, I have frozen the signal from uh, the instrument optimized for setup with this probe and looking at the four inch thickness of the uh, rubber step block. Uh, we won't go through the full setup for that. We'll go through the USM100 setup here in a few minutes. But uh, that gives you kind of a reference signal. Uh, you see the echo at 80% uh, full screen height, actually a little over about 90%, and gain set at 88.5 dB to accomplish that. Over here on the USM100, I have also optimized a uh, setup for that. I have the... Uh, Display frozen, again with the 4-inch echo. Uh, gain here is set to 71 dB. Uh, on the USM100, yeah, we'll see in a minute, even though the pulsar voltage doesn't go quite as high, it tops out at 350 volts as opposed to 450. Um, that's only a, a dB or two difference to start with. However, on this instrument, we can set the pulse width as wide as two and a half microseconds, uh, 2,500 nanoseconds. So we can deliver more energy to the crystal with USM100 than we could with USN60. Um, that coupled with uh, a good low frequency filter in here, we have a filter optimized at 500 kilohertz. And uh, that coupled with the, the very uh, quiet amplifier that's in this instrument to begin with, uh, really shows off this particular application. So again, on the left, the USN60. On the right, uh, the USM100. Uh, you can see in the USM100, our noise floor is lower. It's only a couple of percent screen height. Uh, we have some acoustic information up front here, but the, the basic noise floor of the instrument is still very quiet, down below 2 or 3 percent. Here in the USN60, you can see a higher noise floor. That's about 4 or 5%, a little higher, some of it peaking uh, closer to 8 or 9%. So just overall quieter and making more efficient use of the probe. So let's take this out of freeze mode, and we'll start over from scratch and show you how we set, this in, set the USM100 up for this test. So I'm just going to drop out of my app. And we're going to be using the, uh, the app that's provided with the instrument, the basic conventional app. And I'm going to start that over from scratch. I'm going to choose the launch option, which starts it from the beginning. Let me bring my probe back around here and connect. And for now, we're going to move down to the one inch step to aid in our setup a little bit. So a couple of things that we need to do. Um, first thing we're going to do is come in and set up, uh, tell it something about this probe. So, okay, so I touch the A scan to open the menus, and I'm going to choose the probe menu to start. Uh, we have a flat part. We're going to set our velocity to 0 0.06 inches per microsecond. I happen to know that the rubber is approximately 0 0.06 inches per microsecond velocity. Close that. Uh, let's see. 
we're going to tell it that the probe frequency is 0.5 megahertz. We're going to tell it that the probe delay is approximately 2.3 microseconds. That's a property I just happen to be familiar with in this probe. And the rest of that menu is fine. And we're going to go to our A scan menu. And we're going to tell it that we want 8 inches of display range. That would be nice for looking at the various steps in the block. And we'll go to the pulser receiver menu. And the first thing we're going to do is go to manual PRF mode. We want to set our rep rate low because we're using a very wide pulser. Uh, scroll down, or we're just going to go right to 100 hertz. Okay, we're going to max out our pulser at 350 volts. And we're going to take our pulse width to, uh, let's set that to 2,000 nanoseconds. So the 500 kilohertz pulser, one complete cycle of the uh, ceramic is going to be uh, 2,000 nanoseconds, one over 500 kilohertz, uh, 2,000 nanoseconds. Um, ordinarily, uh, half wave, uh, so about half of that would do well. But I found with this pulser, all the energy we can give this uh, this probe is the best performance that we get out of it. So we're going to call that 2000. And then we're going to close that menu. Let's adjust our dB step a little bit to get some coarse gain steps. Uh, we'll take it up to 6 dB per step. And I'm going to come around the back here and hit the gain button. And we'll take that up to 70 or so. One thing we forgot to do earlier was to set it to our half megahertz filter. We had the filter set way too high a frequency. So let's come back down here. Okay. So we have our one inch, two inch, three inch. Let's give it a little bit more gain. Go back to 2,000 nanoseconds of pulser width. Okay. Our B gate out of the way. Drag our A gate over here. Let's go auto 80. There we go. And our four inch step. Auto 80. I think we have very good coupling here. There we go. We're way high. Let's hit auto 80 again, and just back to there we go. Now we're back to about 81 dB. Nice quiet noise for three inches, two inches. So now let's, uh, let's take some of that gain out. We'll go back to our one and two inch steps, and we will advance the next panel where we can do a, a two-point calibration. So we're going to do our calibration at one inch and two inch. Take our gain down here over our one inch. So now we can swipe out the sidebar. So this is a special feature of the OSM 100. We can swipe out the sidebar and the sidebar menu, it's a special menu that's present on each of the panels and it has some of the most commonly used controls for that panel. Uh, right at your fingertips. So this is our two-point uh, calibration panel for velocity and probe delay. So the two of the most frequently used controls are going to be our reference one thickness. You know, what's the thickness of the first uh, step we're going to look at and what's the thickness of the second. So we're going to tell it we want to look at one, in, one inch and two inch. Okay, and we're going to do a multi-step calibration so I can swipe left to hide that menu again. My gate is already over my one inch echo. I can do auto 80 and hit calibration. 
Now it's telling me to go to the second step, reference two, yeah, with two inch. So I can do that, do auto 80, calibrate, and it comes up with 0 0.0608 inches per microsecond and 2.214 microseconds of delay. So now we have our, our delay and velocity calibrated. You can see my gate reading up top here is telling me that I'm measuring two inches on that step. We get back here, we'll get our one inch step. They're gain under control, we're back at 0.998, so effectively two. Okay, move to the next panel. Next panel doesn't help us a lot here. This is uh, auto angle, since we're doing a normal uh, beam probe, uh, no need for the auto angle. We can take a look here at our uh, eval panel. Uh, if we swipe out. I'm going to change my eval mode to DAC because I want to set up a TCG curve to help us even these things out. So I'm going to say I want to do a custom curve, which means I can just pick my points more or less at random. Uh, so now I can go ahead and record. So if I do auto 80 on that point, I hit record my first point. I see my DAC curve appear. Go to two inches. Do auto 80, record a DAC point, again hit the cow, go to three inches, here, auto 80, cow, and go to four inches, eighty cow. Okay, so now I've got a DAC curve showing steps one through four. And if I scroll down in this menu a little bit and I switch from DAC mode to TCG, now I have a gain curve set up for TCG, which allows me to get a nice echo on any of the four steps. It's a little hot there. Okay, so I can take a couple of dB out. I need to choose a little finer gain steps now. Let's go back to half a dB. Yep, take half a dB out. There we go. So that gives me pretty usable steps. Um, so there we go. Uh, we can hide that menu. So now we have a setup that allows us to take, if I widen my gate here, by touching and dragging on the screen. Maybe I want to go to a wider A scan. I think we had eight inches on our USN 60, so let's set that up the same. Okay, so there's eight inches. We're at half screen. Go to the four inch step. There's my, give it just a little bit more couplet. There we go. Take a little gain out. Okay, there we have you know, sort of an apples to apples comparison. Move our gate out of the way here so that you can see the echo nicely. Uh, actually, let me bring that back here a second. Hide the menu, oops. Hide the menu, do an auto 80. Now we have apples to apples. Eight inches of range, just like on the 60, we have our Echo at 80%, we're running live. I can scroll down here, hit the freeze button, and freeze that. So there's a, a good side-by-side -side comparison. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, a good example of how uh, using some of the, the various parameters of the pulser can be used to really optimize the performance of a probe like this and get through very uh, attenuated materials. So thank you for joining me, and as always, if you have any questions, please reach out to remote service at bakerhughes.com. Thank you.